Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up your NAT ports so that you can use Xbox Lite without getting the strict setting. What you're going to want to do is go to your router's IP address. To figure that out, you're going to open up a terminal. In Linux, all you got to do is press Control alt t and uh, you type ifconfig. In Windows, you have to go to Start, Accessories, and then it should be under Accessories. Now, here you're going to get your router's IP address by using the first three sections of this. So this one is 192.168.1 and then this number you're going to put a 1 instead of what's here. So you're going to go 192.168.1.1 For a lot of the newer routers this is actually a 0 but mine just happens to be a 1. Now normally it's going to ask you for a password if you haven't changed it, it's going to be admin, admin, A-D-M-I-N, for both of them. If not, it's whatever you set it for. Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is check under the administration tab. Make sure UPNP is enabled. That is universal plug and play. Once you enable it, save it. Okay, once you have it saved and you check your Xbox and it's still giving you an error, go to application and gaming so what you're gonna wanna do is go to port range triggering first and type Xbox Live under the application name so you don't get confused okay the ports are actually these ones right here I'm gonna put a link but if not just google it Xbox Live NAT ports you're gonna set these up and the reason we're using triggering is so that we don't have to set up an, a static IP address on the Xbox. So we're going to start off with 88. And you're going to put it straight across on all of these. And then enable it. Next, you're going to do 30, 74. Oops. And then fifty three, and then eighty. Now, about eighty. You're not going to want to use eighty in this situation because the routers are designed to forward port eighty because that's the HTTP port, which is the internet. Just label all of them, check them, make sure they're enabled, and save the setting. Now whenever your Xbox sends a request, it's going to know where to send the port, and it should fix it for most routers. If it doesn't, you're going to have to go to single port forwarding, and then all the ports that were right here are going to have to be put right here. Now, here's the thing. When you set it up here, on the Xbox, you have to set up a static IP address you can find that on Google on how to do that once you set up your I static IP address you're just gonna put them in here I haven't set one up for mine so I don't have to but you're just gonna type the number like in this case 88 88 and depending on what it was I believe this one was UDP yeah and type your Xbox's IP address and enable do that for all the ports that you need and then just save okay now the next step I do not recommend but it's a good way to troubleshoot your Xbox once you have set up your static IP address or if you know the MAC address to your Xbox you can put it here let's say uh, the static IP address was 123 to the Xbox you type it in there and just save it and what that's going to do is going to forward all the ports to the Xbox and it's very unsafe you more risks of viruses or people tracking your information but it's a good way to troubleshoot and that is how you check your NAT ports on Xbox if you have uh, other questions you can always use Google let's say you want to use the PS3 ports you said PS3 NAT ports. And just look through.
see if you find something. Well, this one doesn't show anything. Yeah, here they are. These are all the ports for PlayStation. You would put those either in triggering or forwarding. I recommend triggering though if this fails, the UPnP. And well, the foolproof way to check it is DMZ. That one will f work every time. Alright, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.